So welcome to National 4 and National 5 Chemistry. Uh, we are in Unit 1, Acids and Alkalis, and today's lesson is going to look at the ions responsible for acids and alkalis, so the H plus ion and the OH minus ion. And we're also going to look at what happens whenever we add water to an acid and dilute it. So in terms of success criteria, we would hope that you'd be able to state that the H plus or the H3O plus ion, as it's also known, are the source of acidity. You can state that the hydroxide or OH minus ion is the source of alkalinity. And be able to know that pH is a measure of the concentration of H plus ions in solution. And that HPH unit represents a 10 times change or increase in concentration of the H plus ion. So firstly, we need to look at water itself. In water, most molecules exist in the formula H2O, two hydrogen atoms bonded to one oxygen atom. And it looks like this. However, in water, some of those molecules can actually break apart into ions. So the water molecule is broken into just one white circle and then the red and white circle. So the white circle on its own is a hydrogen ion and it is a positive charge because it's left its electron that was shared behind with the oxygen and the red and white ion is negatively charged because it's now fully obtained the electron from the hydrogen ion. So that is the hydrogen ion, the H plus ion, and the hydroxide ion. So you need to know we have hydrogen ions and we have hydroxide ions. Now, whenever it comes to water, water can separate into ions. So this is a representation of what we talked about on the last slide, written as an equation. So water can break into an H plus ion and a hydroxide ion. This process is reversible. So all the time, in a glass of water, you will have some water molecules, in fact, you'll have mostly water molecules, but you will have small numbers of H plus ions and hydroxide ions. And those H plus ions and those hydroxide ions can recombine to give an H2O water molecule. So that's how we know it. Um, however, in a bit more detail, um, that H plus ion on its own is just a proton. And so we'll often attach to another water molecule. So you can also write the equation, two water molecules goes to an H3O plus ion plus a hydroxide ion, and that's called the hydronium ion. However, you just need to know the equation at the top. The bottom of that slide is just additional information that if you continue with chemistry, you'll need to know. But for national five, national four, you just need to know that water produces hydrogen plus ions and hydroxide minus ions. Now, what is pH? pH is a measure of the concentration of H plus or hydrogen ions in solution. So in an acid solution, the pH is less than seven. This we already know. But in terms of the ions, an acid will increase the number of H plus ions and decrease the number of OH minus ions. So this ends up, a solution that is an acid has more H plus ions than OH minus ions. That's what makes it an acid. Any solution that has a greater number of hydrogen ions compared to hydroxide ions will be an acid. Neutral solutions have a pH of exactly seven. And water is a neutral solution. In substances like water, the concentration of H plus ions and the concentration of hydroxide ions are exactly the same. They are equal to one another. For an alkali, we know that an alkali or base, the pH is greater than seven. And what alkalis do is they decrease the concentration of H plus ions and increase the concentration of hydroxide ions. And so 
when we're thinking about the relative numbers, alkalis have less hydrogen ions and more hydroxide ions. So we can remember for acids, H plus greater than OH minus. For neutral, H plus equals OH minus. And for alkalis, H plus is less than OH minus. Remember, H plus makes things acid, OH minus makes things alkali. If you have more H plus, you will be acid. If you have more OH minus, you will be alkali. And if you have exactly the same amount of each of them, you will be neutral. Now, this is a bit of a numeracy task, but what it takes in order for the pH to change by one, the concentration of H plus ions needs to change by 10 times. So a pH one has 10 times more hydrogen ions than pH two. pH two has 10 times more hydrogen ions than pH three. And pH three has 10 times more hydrogen ions than pH four. This means that pH one will have a hundred times more H plus than pH three, and pH one has a thousand times more H plus than pH four. So every time you change one pH unit, you're changing the concentration of H plus by 10 times. So um, if you're able to, what we would do is we would do a dilution experiment where we start with one concentration of acid and we have a rack of test tubes. We take one centimeter cubed of our starting acid and then dilute it by adding nine centimeters cubed of water. And we keep doing that process, take one centimeter cubed from one tube, add nine centimeters cubed of water and keep going. And then we test the pH of all of them. And you keep going until you've used about seven or eight different test tubes. Now, what this does and what you should find is that the acid, it starts off a red color. And then with each dilution, the color starts to change. So as you dilute the acid, the pH indicator will turn orange, then it will turn yellow, and you might even see it looking a bit yellow green in your final test tubes. Now, if we remember that pH measures the concentration of H plus ions in solution. When we dilute an acid, what happens to the concentration? If we dilute anything, what happens to concentration? Concentration gets smaller. If the concentration of H plus ions gets smaller, decreases, the pH increases. So the pH number increases. Because remember, pH one represents having lots and lots of H plus ions. Every time you decrease that concentration, the pH needs to go up. Now, an important question to ask ourselves is, if we keep adding water and diluting an acid, can we turn it from an acid into something that's neutral or something that's alkali? The answer to that is no. An acid, no matter how much you dilute it, will always be an acid. So we can plot a graph of the pH um, of our samples compared to the um, amount of dilution we've done. And so if we started with a solution that was pH 1, every time we dilute it, the pH goes up and it keeps going up and up and up until it gets close to 7. But it can never turn into 7 and it can never go above 7. So a graph of dilution will start at pH 1 and form a curve that finishes just around pH 7. If you're having to draw that graph, if you're asked to draw that graph in an exam, you need to make sure you never draw your line touching or going above pH 7. Even if it's just once, you need to rub that line out again and make sure it's always below 7. So now we've got some questions. pH is related to the concentration of which ion? 
pH is related to the concentration of which ion? The answer is the H plus ion. Next question. In alkalis, what symbol are we going to put between H plus and OH minus? So we can put greater than, equal to, or less than for alkalis. For alkalis, H plus is less than OH minus. In acids, H plus is what compared to hydroxide? Well, acids are the opposite of alkalis, so H plus is going to be greater than OH minus. Now, what happens when we dilute an alkali? So we looked at diluting an acid and we saw that the pH went up, the pH value increased. What will happen to the pH value, do you think, if we dilute an alkali? Well, if we dilute an alkali, the pH value will get lower. And with just like with acids, the pH will never go below 7, though. So it might start at 14 and it'll go down, but it'll never get to seven. Now we've got neutral solutions. This is our final question for today. In neutral solutions, what can we say about the concentration of H plus ions and hydroxide ions? So for neutral things, those two are equal. So this has been a lesson where we looked at um, the ions responsible for acids and alkalis, remember that that H+, plus, or the hydrogen ion as it's known, is what makes solutions acidic. The OH-, minus, or hydroxide ion as it's known, makes things alkali. If you have more H+, plus than OH-, minus, you will be an acid. If you have more OH- minus than H+, plus, you will be an alkali. And if you have equal numbers of H, you will be neutral. We also saw that if we take an acid and dilute it, that causes the pH to rise and um, it will continue to rise, but it will never rise to seven or above. It'll always stay below seven. So we end up with a graph that's curved. For alkali solutions, they will start at pH of 14. And if we dilute them, the pH will fall. However, the pH can never get to um, seven or below, so it will be a curve that finishes at seven. So that has been our introduction to the ions responsible for acids and alkalis, and I will catch you next time.